Hey, what is going on, my fellow Sagittarius's? Uh, Butch Terrell here. I am going to do your month of July read. Uh, it is a general read, so it may not resonate with everyone. It is for your sun, moon, rising, and your Venus. For all you cross watchers, roles can be reversed. Always feel free to comment down below. Um, with all that being said, uh, I want to wish a happy Canada Day to all my Canucks out there. And uh, coming up in a few days, happy Independence Day to my uh, American friends. Uh, with all that being said, let's get it. Universe, what message do we have for Sagittarius for July 2024? Sagittarius. It's so hot here when I was shuffling that I actually felt good, so I was going to continue to shuffle, but that would be a boring video. Um, <laughs> first thing I see, Sagittarius, I feel like this is someone that you already are connected with, um, but I'm feeling a lot of chaotic energy with this person. You know, I, I, I feel like with this person, it's like you want them to show up, but they haven't been showing up. You know, they haven't been putting in the work. You know, I, I feel like you're always the, you know, lately you have always been the one giving, you know, and I, and I feel like also I get this energy of you defending this connection, even though sometimes there is that internal struggle within you um, to keep this moving. You know, I, I don't feel like it was always this way, but I feel like lately it's been, it, it feels like you're not on the same page anymore. And it's kind of like this defeated energy. It's, it's feeling like you're putting in all the work, but you're not getting anything back. Now, don't get mad at me. This is just what I'm seeing. Um, I feel like you've been taking care of this person a lot. And in you taking care of them, they got a little lazy. You know, and like I said, it's just what I'm seeing. Don't don't shoot the messenger. But they got a little lazy. You know, and, and I kind of, I keep thinking about that. Um, I went to the zoo a while back. And I took my kids and one of my, one of my sons, he said to me, we've seen the lion. He said, why is the lion just laying there? And he just looks like, you know, he's not doing anything. Uh, and, I'm, and this is what it's making me think about. It, it's making me think about the fact that, like I told him, you know, you put a lion in captivity, they stop being a lion. You know, they're just bringing your, their meals to you. A lion was made to hunt. You know, they're bringing meals to him. You know, um, he's got this little small area to be in, you know, even though it looks like a big cage to us, he's used to being, you know, all over the place, go where he wants. So it's like, kind of like that energy here. And, and you know, I feel like you've been, he, you kind of went above and beyond for this person and they just kind of took it for granted. You know, not saying you bring their food to them, but maybe, maybe they're laying on the couch and you're bringing the food to them instead of them getting up and cooking anymore like they used to. I mean, they weren't always this way, but I feel like, I feel like you did too much for them. And I'm not blaming you at all. I'm just reading the cards. I feel like you've done too much for them and they stopped doing stuff for themselves. 
but I feel like, you know, we're looking at the negatives instead of the positives here, but I feel like there's a very easy fix for this. You know, what I'm seeing is we're looking at the negatives and we're not seeing the positives. The easy fix is stop doing shit for them. You know, stop doing everything for them. You know, sometimes in a relationship, you know, in the beginning, we start doing a little bit for our partner. And then the more we do it, they kind of let us do more. You know, it's it, it's like um, when I was young, I remember living with my mother. Um, and I'm talking about like when I was a kid. Um, my mom was one of those people that she she washed and folded your clothes and always had it on your bed, made your bed. She didn't make me do anything. So when I got on the real world, I was a little bit spoiled and I had to learn how to be a lion again. <laughs> but what I see with this person, you know, I, I, I feel like we have to have open communication first and foremost. And we just, you know, I feel like, I, I, don't get me wrong, I feel like they're picking up the energy as well. They they feel this this energy, you know, this chaotic energy around. They know there's something wrong. Um, I'm not really, I'm getting the fact that they're not really sure what's wrong, but they know that something's wrong. Now, with this person, they know what they want. They want you. You know, they know what they want. But I feel like we have to tell them, what we, you know, we have to tell them what we want. You know, they're just not doing it for you. They're not They're not showing up. They're not putting in the work. I mean, this person, like I said, they're not walking away from this. No way, shape, or form will they walk away from this. They don't want to walk away from this. They want to be with you. And the moment you stop chasing them, I feel like you're going to get a huge surprise. They'll start chasing you. You know, and, and like I said, I mean, the potential it, it, with with this person is off the charts. And I feel like this is why it bugs you so much because I feel like this person became kind of docile and you, you're the one doing all the work. I mean, you're, you're the one putting on all the work. But if you allow them to, they will show up. You know, they will put in the work. But we can't be in this self-imposed prison. That's the energy I'm feeling and that's why we need to open up. We gotta come out of that self-imposed prison. You have the key. That's the whole idea of the self-imposed prison. It's like you locking yourself into a prison cage and sitting in there. And even though shit is bugging you, even though it's annoying the hell out of you, you just keep not saying things. You know, hoping that it's going to get better. I mean, this person cares about you in a very deep way. I mean, you know, they're connected to you. And they want to spend their life with you. But I feel like they got a little lazy. Now, that's not... I I don't want it to make it sound like I'm blaming you for being too nice to this person. I mean, it's on them as well. There's no one to blame here except for the circumstance at hand. But, I mean, this person, like I said, they think about you and only you. You know, I th I, I believe that you want a future with this person, but you want to be on the same page. And the only way to be on the, get on the same page is they need to pick up the book. You know, I, I feel like you were both reading the book in the beginning. You were going page for page and then all of a sudden they started, you know, taking more breaks than they were, they were supposed to. And now they've fallen behind. But, you know, I, I, I see a lot of emotional fulfillment and I see, um, you know, a strong foundation. I feel like you trust each other. I just feel like it kind of fell off the rails a little bit here. You know, and I feel like it's, it's a matter of seeing things in a different perspective and they need to see that perspective. Now, I'm not going to say the word, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I just feel like the word that keeps coming up to me is that tough love. You know, you want this person to show up. You got to give them opportunity to show up. You know, you can't just keep doing everything for them. You know, taking care of someone is not the same as loving someone. You know, I mean, you take care of your kids, you take care of your parents when they get old or whatever, but you, you're not supposed to take care of your partner when they don't need taken care of. You know, you're supposed to be there for them when they need you, but they don't need you to take care of them. 
they can take care of themselves. And they need to see that perspective because if they don't, you're going to get the same. It's going to continue to be the same. You know, they have to be, like I said, they, they have to learn how to be a lion again. You know, the lion is what you wanted. The lion is what you got. You know, and like I said, I feel like we have to have that conversation and, you know, we have to open up the communication and just tell them like, this is, this is what the problem is. I feel like you've been very quiet about what the problem is, or at least you haven't been saying it, um, in the way that you mean it. And maybe they weren't taking you seriously, but having that conversation, I feel like is going to cause a huge transformation and is going to help this move forward. The line's still in there. It's just been sleeping. You know, I, I feel like they need to be inspired. And the only way to, you know, they need to inspire themselves. And the only way for you to do that is let them, let them do it. And if you let them do it, they will. They will show up for you. They will put in the work. You know, I mean, this person loves you. That's one thing I can say in this, this reading is, is they love you, you know, and they, and they don't want to lose you. And I, I honestly feel like they don't know that they are losing you. And that's part of the conversation we need to have. And once, like I said, those big changes, that huge transformation of this person, you're going to be back on the same page. You're meant to be in the same page. You know, I, I, I see this huge commitment between the two of you but um you know i this was meant to move forward i i, I feel like this is your person and i just feel like they kind of lost their way you know it's like i said i mean i'm not going to bring i don't mean to bring that up again but you know when i first got my first apartment i you know, I go to work and I come home and my bed wouldn't be made. My clothes wouldn't be done. And I, I learned really quickly that I had to do it myself. <laughs> now, that's not my mom's fault. She's just a loving person. Um, she likes to take care of people, but it wasn't productive. But I also should have known better because my dad was the opposite. My dad's like, do everything yourself. Everything. You know, if I'm not home and you're hungry, you need to learn to cook. If the grass is getting long, you know, the grass is getting long, I don't need to tell you, you go mow it. And if you don't, think for yourself, I'm going to get mad at you for it. So I kind of had this dual personality in my house. Um, well, not in the same house because my parents have been separated since I was three months old. But in, in different houses, at my, my dad's was a different energy than my mom's. So, um, but I always prefer to be at my mom's. But, you know, she babied me too much. And I had to grow up quick. But thankfully, my dad was the opposite of my mom. Because, I mean, I learned how to do all the things. I just didn't need to do it when I was with my mom. So, um, you know, you're not raising this person. You're not, your job isn't to take care of them. When they're sick, you take care of them. When you're sick, they take care of you. That's the only time you should have to really take care of your partner. You know, if they're, if they're down in the dumps, then yeah, be there for them. But you shouldn't have to be you know, waiting hand and foot on a person. You know, it causes resentment. And I feel like that's a lot of the issues we're having here is it, it, kind of resenting this person for, you know, you putting in 90% and they're putting in 10 when they're, they're more than capable of putting in 50. But like I said, I, you know, once you stop chasing, once you stop waiting hand in front of this person, they will show up. You know, the lion is still in there or the lioness whatever your situation is. Um, you know, sometimes we get a little too comfortable in a situation. And then, it, you know, we we want them to show up, but we don't really say anything because we figure they're going to figure it out on their own. Some people need a kick in the ass. They need it. They're not going to like it most times, but they need it. Now with this person, we have Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. We have, you know, we have some Aquarius, some Gemini. 
mean, we have Scorpio. We got some Cancer, Pisces. That's some Virgo as well. You know, that's that's why. Um, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you and very candid. Uh, you know, me and uh, my partner, she's been mad at me because, uh, you know, in the beginning she she took, she was very good and took care of me. Uh, you know, she packed my lunch for work and everything was good. And then, and it was fine, you know, but then we had kids and then it was like she needed to take care of the kids. And that's when I learned that I, you know, I, I got spoiled too much. And I had to get used to that. And I got used to it really quickly. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man. And I know how to take care of myself. It was nice to have someone take care of me. But. You know, like I said. It, she was willing to give me the kick in the ass. And I appreciated that. You know, I, I grew up on tough love from my father. So, you know. It, it, I used to joke around with her. I'm like. You know, in the beginning, it was more like uh, you were my mother and then you turned into my father really quickly. <laughs> but if you're not, if you're not showing up for your partner, you know, it's, what's the point? I mean, it's a partnership. That's why they call it a partnership, your partner. Because they're supposed to show up for you. They're supposed to put in the work. You know, and I watched this interview one time with this, this lady and she was talking about how you know, her and her husband have this balance of where she's like, okay, today I got 20%. I need 80% from you. And then another day she'd be like, I got 80%. I need 20% from you. But it always equals 100. When it starts, you know, but then, you know, it, I, I think back to one of my buddies, He, him and his girlfriend broke up and it's kind of relevant to this reading and the fact that uh, she just got to the point where she was sick of it. She was sick and, you know, she was doing his laundry for him. She's like, I'm not your mother. I'm your girlfriend. And she said, I don't want to be your mother. And I need someone that shows up for me. And yeah, I don't mind doing these things for you. But you you need to show up and do the things for me. And she said, I feel like I'm giving 120% to this relationship. And I'm still not making 100. So there's something going wrong here. <clears throat> they broke up for a while. He was stubborn, you know, but he ended up going, they, they ended up getting back together and they've been going good now for the last four or five years. And, you know, I feel like they have more of a partnership now before it was more like he was, she was the employer and he was the employee expecting everything, you know, putting in minimal work, minimal effort and getting a paycheck at the end of the week. But that's the thing in life. You've got to, you know, you got to show up or, or that other person, their their back's going to get sore because they've been carrying things too long. You know, and I mean, even with Rose, her um, uncle and aunt, I always, get, I always laugh at their relationship. And I, I don't mean to laugh, but I always laugh inside. And I'm you know, just thinking because, so we were at this party one time and, um, like just a family get together, not like a party, like drinking and stuff, just like a family get together. I think it was maybe a baby shower or something. I don't really remember. It was a long time ago, but I remember she would go and his wife would get up and make him a plate, you know, put stuff on a plate for him and bring it to him. And, and then when he was done, she'd take the plate and take it to the kitchen. And, you know, she was always doing everything. Um, and I was like, how does, you know, she seems kind of like a slave, but, but it works because, you know, he always worked and she was always a stay-at-home mother. And, you know, he never, ever once put any of the bills on her. You know, she, because I, we were talking one night a couple years after that. And I remember I mentioned to her, I was like, why do you like serve him like that? She's like, because everything else he takes care of. She's like, I don't know what our bills are. I don't know what they cost, but I know they always get taken care of. The water's always on, the power's always on. You know, she said, uh, he'd come home and he'd, take, he'd do things with the kids and stuff. So, I mean, it wasn't like he was just, you know, I was waiting on him hand and foot. I just, that was the dynamic of the relationship. And I like serving him, you know, and I like 
being protected and feeling safe. And I guess that's why different relationships work different ways. You know, it, it seemed really, you know, it was different than most relationships I saw, but if it works for them, I mean, they've been married like 40 years, so it worked for them, it worked for them, I guess, but some relationships have different dynamics. I just don't feel like this is the dynamic that you set up for. And I feel like it's just getting overwhelming. And instead of giving up, let's just have a talk. You'd be surprised what's going to happen, you know. Uh, 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 honest communication can solve a lot of problems but hiding you know hiding that resentment and burying it down and burying it down eventually it's going to overflow and you're going to be pissed off and it's going to be a point where it may not be a point where you can return anyway that's what I have for you be good take care stay safe